Here is a C sharp major few. And on first blush, it looks a lot like the C minor fugue, in that it's a counter subject oriented fugue. Uh, I use the same color system, let's say about outrageous red and green and, and yellow. And uh, so green is the main subject. Uh, let's take a moment to, to admire this. <laughs> throughout this fugue, because sometimes it's constant, sometimes it's dissonant. We don't know until we hear the counter subject that the main posture for this subject is it, that that jump down is to a dissonant note. That's a dissonance. They'd never get this one. Because for one thing, it's, it's kind of a little suspect. Um, because if I play the, the subject along with this yellow, if I play the, the green and the yellow together, uh, it's basically doing the same thing. Just uh, the, the, the notes are the same. this sense of an independent character for this, this third line. It's, it's floating over the others in a way that's almost sort of free from them. And um, again, it, it's uh, something as, as, the, as the fugue progresses, you hear that more and more, uh, even at times when it becomes a little bit uh, awkward. For example, at this point is where the, uh, the green is in the alto, and the yellow is in the soprano, which means they're actually jumping on each other's feet. Um, you know, there's just a lot of uh, technical issues trying to make a, a two lines that are actually playing the same notes so much of the time. So that's, that's how the, the subject and, and the array of those three voices is constructed. What makes this piece very different from the C minor fugue is the way the episode material is used. And uh, there's a lot of wonderful things that go on, which we don't have time to discuss. But the one important thing that I would like to leave you with before we call it a night is that if you look at this page, ending, this is with the green and red and yellow right here. And the next time we see green and red is here. We have about a quarter of a piece that does not have any fugue subject. 
is just having a good time. <laughs> just bouncing all over the place. And, and the, actually, the music is not even particularly you know, profound. Um, it's not going to a bunch of different keys. It's basically hanging very close to C-sharp major or um, F-sharp major. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful example, I think, of Bach doing just you know, what you would not expect someone to do, but gives the piece its character. Because the C minor fugue is one that seems to be all about economy and sort of seriousness and uh, real direct sort of punchiness to it and all those false relationships and things like that. This is just the opposite. This is a very friendly, happy piece. And even though it does have that one piece part I just played for you, the clouds uh, separate very quickly from that. And there's a version of the fugue, the, the subject material, that he uses to create the episodes, which is... Um, Um, that where it would be, that what had been a dissonance is now a consonance. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not playing the right thing. Well, we'll go over here and look at it because over here you can see these. Those are consonances. music, um, which makes a wonderful respite from the, the more uh, angular counterpoint of the other sections, and makes a perfect setup for this last uh, statement. The last statement of the fugue subject starts here, and it's after we've had um, this end of what I was just playing. <laughs> except with an extra voice added. So where the beginning was the soprano and the soprano, here it's uh, two voices and then three voices, and we finally get to um, all three voices, exactly the same music as it was over here. But here, the music led us to the key of the child, and we can't end in the child's key, so we have to make this adjusted somehow so that all of this music over here is now transposed into the key of C sharp, the parent key. And there's one last moment then where you'll hear this. Uh, we talked about these last moments of, of flatness and sharpness of fighting against each other. And here's a wonderful example of it. I'll play just this last line so you can hear. It's all very diatonic and. Thank you. 